keep on loving each other as brothers. Excuse me, I'm in the wrong text, but that's a good text. Amen. Amen. I think the Lord had a message here. (laughs) And he also said, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. And remember those who are in prison as if they were your fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. But, but here's the other word. Therefore, holy brothers, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. Verse 7, so as the Holy Spirit says... Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me and for 40 years saw what I did. And then verse 12. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The invitation that we are making to ourselves and one another is to turn our eyes on Jesus. So in a quiet way, we begin worship. Would you stand? And would you turn your eyes on Jesus? If you have your Bibles, I would encourage you to turn to Colossians, the third chapter. If you get distracted during the message this morning, I would encourage you to read the whole letter to the Colossian church, starting at verse 1 of chapter 1. In fact, I don't mind if you do that while I'm speaking. Because the word of God is powerful and the word of God has some things to say to us this morning. We're going to look at Colossians 3 and the two, two focus verses for the message come out of verses 1 and 2 of chapter 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. The title of the message for today is The Battle for Heaven. We are in a battle. Is the PowerPoint working? Froze too? Okay. (laughs) We're in a battle to keep a heavenly perspective, and that's what Paul is talking about. If you read through the first two chapters, Paul is going to set up this relationship that we have in Christ, and this incredible thing that that we have because Christ has died on the cross, risen from the dead, and invited us to experience this amazing thing that we get to have a relationship with God. But there's this battle that we fight, and it's a battle not like that phrase. Some of you have probably heard the phrase, being so heavenly minded you're of no earthly good. I think we're kind of beyond that phrase today. There's very few people that have their minds so much on heaven that they're not able to take care of people here. Our problem is we've got our mind too much here. We're caught up in the behaviors, the circumstances, and the sin of our world. Frankly, we can even get caught up in the politics, the the things that are happening around us, the crisis at the times, and in all of that, we can actually totally get our eyes off of Jesus Christ and heaven. Do you remember what happened to Stephen as he is in front of the, the, the religious leaders, 
and they're telling him, stop talking about Jesus. By the way, he's, he's a deacon. He's, he's a food server, right? He was called upon to, to, to serve food. In fact, the disciples picked him and six other brothers to take care of providing food for widows, the, the Greek widows, incidentally. And he was a Greek. They're still Jewish, but he was a Greek. He selected to do that. Why? Because they had been neglected. And so, so God gave some great wisdom, and they select these men, and they said the reason why they did this was so that the apostles could do what? Preach and pray. Uh, pastor Bill, I think you just heard a message there for you. Your job is to what as a pastor? Come on, y'all should have gotten that one. <laughs> pastor Bill, your job is to preach and pray. Uh, guess what? Everyone who's a shepherd in a life group, which is our facilitators, our leaders of life groups, you are shepherds too, right? Incidentally, the word for shepherd is the word for pastor. So anyone who has care over some other people you're supposed to do what? Preach and pray. Do you get it? So guess what? I'm not alone then, am I? <laughs> okay. okay, so here. Here's Stephen, but he's brought in in front of the Sanhedrin. And, and then what does he do? He starts to preach. <laughs> oh, he can too. He starts to preach about the history of Israel and the coming of the Messiah, and he names him as Jesus. And these guys are getting angrier and angrier. And as the anger and the rage is building, he's, he lets out this great declaration that's going to get him stoned. And I'm not talking about drugged. Okay. He looks and he says, look, I see heaven opening up. And I see Jesus, the Son of God, seated on the right hand throne of the throne of God. And because of that, they grab him, rush him out of the city, and stone him to death. And as they're stoning him, his eyes still looking into the throne room, he says, and he can see the Father there on the throne next to Jesus, and he says, forgive them. Forgive them. We need to have eyes that can see into heaven. And there's this battle that's trying to keep us from looking at things from a heavenly perspective. Instead, we look at it from a human perspective. Ray Stedman's commenting on this section says that being a Christian means we have an extra dimension to life. There is a hidden resource, an invisible reality, which the world does not have and cannot see. This is not referring to Christ being up in heaven, lost in space somewhere. Rather, this refers to what Paul has talked about earlier in the letter. If you read the first chapter, here's what he says. Christ in you, the hope of glory. As we look at Jesus in heaven, we also recognize that Christ lives in us and is the hope of glory. This extra dimension, Stedman says, is not far removed in the reaches of space. It is right within the heart, an untouchable, invisible dimension within us. This is the glory of the Christian life and the secret of its power, its joy, and its courage. Christ is in you, and he is the hope of glory. And that's the secret of our ability to face even tough circumstances. Doug, we were talking about tribulation talking about potential end times and what if we are there here's the message Christ is in you and he is the hope of glory but the world is going to try to get us and even we are going to get distracted from Christ in us from looking at him Amen. if you set your mind on heaven then your view of this world is going to change do you remember what Jesus said to Pilate Pilate. Pilate's questioning him and saying, you know, well, I hear you're the Messiah. <laughs> okay, well, that's what they've said, you say. And then he asks, Pilate asks him again, you know, so tell me about your kingdom. And then here's what Jesus says. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. We're in a battle. 
to get our eyes back to heaven. Little boy, the story's told about a little boy who, <clears throat> who found a $5 bill. And, in, and the story's told two different ways, so I'll give it to you both ways. One is he finds a $5 bill, and, and the, the older story is he finds a gold coin. And he decides that based on that, he's going to take the rest of his life looking down for more $5 bills. And this was reported actually in a newspaper in San Francisco, and it said the paper went on to say that over the years, listen to what he accumulated. 29,516 buttons. 54,172 pins. 12 cents, a bent back, and a miserly disposition. But he also lost something. He lost the glory of sunlight, the radiance of the stars, the smiles of friends, and the freshness of blue skies. Because he, like we, are vulnerable. Get our eyes off of heaven and get focused on the circumstances. <clears throat> Secondly, folks, we're in a battle that's trying to get us to look away from Jesus. And it's in each one of us to look away from Jesus. You see, Paul says to the Corinthians, since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts, set your minds on things above. Since you have identified with Christ's death and his resurrection, since you believe that he died for you and rose from the dead for you, now live in a heavenly way with your eyes on Jesus Christ. Here's how he says it in Romans. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. I want you to stop and just think about you, not the person next to you. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. You can test whether you're looking at Christ by whether you are looking at what the flesh desires or not. What do you find yourself thinking about? when you're not in worship, <laughs> maybe even when you're in worship. <laughs> you find yourself thinking about other people, your eyes are on them, not Jesus. You find yourself focused on the circumstances, the things you're worried about, the things that you're getting anxious about, things you're stressing over, your eyes are on them and those situations, not Jesus. Do you find yourself criticizing people when you're driving down the roads? Some of us talk to the drivers around us, right? Guys, I, the, girls, do you do that just so I know? Oh, yeah. oh okay. I thought that was a guy thing. <laughs> so we talk to, we talk to them, and, and I'm confident that as you're talking to people when you're driving around, you're blessing them, correct? <laughs> no? If our eyes are on the people around us, our eyes are not where? On Jesus. We're a in a battle to get us to look away from Jesus. You see, the cross is the focus of history, isn't it? It's where we got redeemed. It's where we come to know God. And, and the cross has two sides to it. It involves death and resurrection. I apologize. I meant to do something here this morning. I meant to have a sign that said sins. I was going to grab a cross and have it up here, and I was going to hammer our sins onto that cross. Because that's what the cross is for, for our sins. Did you know that, and Warren Wiersbe is the one who says this, what we believe has a very definite connection to how we behave. There again, turn it the other way. Test how you're behaving, and you will find out what you believe. How do you behave with your money? And if we examine what we do with our money, we'll find out what we believe. What do you do with your time? If you examine how you spend your time, you'll find out what you believe. 
What are your relationships like? If you examine your relationships, you'll find out what you believe. Thirdly, we're in a battle, folks, to look at ourselves. What do I mean by that? We get focused on us and what we want. One of the things when we were going through our spiritual warfare series and especially our encounter, our leadership came up with one very important word. We're in a battle with pride. Say it a different way. We're egotistical. We get focused on self and what we want. It contributes to all kinds of conflict, doesn't it? <laughs> In the home, <laughs> with spouses, with family members. And here's a sad thing. It also gets a part, becomes a part of focus in the body of Christ because we get focused on ourselves. Remember what Jesus said to Nicodemus? It was that phrase that really kind of threw a curve to Nicodemus. He said, and Nicodemus had come in the middle of the night and he was kind of wanting to know how he could get to God, to heaven. And, he's, and Jesus responds to him. John chapter 3, verse 3. Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, the interesting thing about that phrase, which we sometimes get confused about, the Greek actually says, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are what? Born from above. As long as we keep our eyes down here on us, we're going to have a problem with heaven. We're in a battle, and that battle wants us looking at ourselves and what we can do to supply our needs and our wishes, and we become very selfish and self-centered in the process. The battle for heaven wants to keep us focused on sin, wants to keep us trapped in it, did you see the, the rest of the chapter goes on like this? In verse 3 it says, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. There's some really good things coming for us uh, in, in heaven. But God wants us to experience heaven now. But here's the problem. And here's some, something we have to do. Look at what the next part says. Verse 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. That's self. Put to death what belongs to your earthly nature. And then he gives you some things in case you didn't have an imagination. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which he says is idolatry. Look at that. As we get, there's our money, isn't it? And by the way, I've always been warned you're not supposed to preach against people's gods because they get mad. And one of the mads in our world, one of the gods, excuse me, in our world is what? Money. Hmm. No wonder, he said, greed is idolatry. You see, we are in a day today where most of you have direct access to pornography if you have a computer. From the youngest of ages to the old. There is impurity, sexual immorality that is simply crying out to us, wanting to suck us in. Now, that's not the only addiction, is it? So he goes on. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. And now he gives us another list. We need to rid ourselves of what? Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your, from your lips. Is it getting warm yet? Well, if it's not, then how about this next one? Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices, have we? 
Have we gotten rid of the old self? And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. We are in a battle to stop looking at ourselves and get our eyes back on Jesus. You're not going to beat sin if you try to do it on your own. You have to do it in Christ. We're also in a battle, and this started to come out in those verses as well. We're in a battle that causes us to look at others. One of the most dangerous things in the body of Christ today is our criticism of one another. We attack each other, and we somehow think it's okay because we're talking to somebody else, not the person that we're upset at. We somehow think that it's okay to ignore the scriptures that say, go to your brother if you have something against them. Instead, we somehow think if we talk to somebody else and we, we say, you know, I'm troubled by something and pray for me, we kind of, you know, put that in there too, that it's okay to not go to the brother. Folks, Sin is sin, no matter how you describe it. And in the body of Christ, and we have seen this here, we have been fighting spiritual forces, and we've seen how, what? Those four words we've used before, how disobedience leads us to dissent, which leads us to deceit which results in disunity. Hmm. We're in a battle to look at others rather than Christ. Philippians says it this way, in your relationships, verse, chapter 2, verse 5, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Worship prompters, I need your eyes. You are in a spiritual battle. We know that for 15 years, worship has been under attack in this specific ministry. You as worship prompters have a target on you that wants to keep you from helping us to worship him. Who's the worship team? Please raise your hands. If you're involved in this church, your hand should be up. <laughs> Marco, raise your hand. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all, the worship team. Because the worship team is all of us, when we come here, we are here to do what? Worship. To worship him. We are the worship team. Folks, we need to be in prayer for the spiritual worship prompters because of the attack that wants to keep us from worshiping God. Keep us from worshiping God. It's one of the reasons why Satan's really good um, and we're kind of really vulnerable to it really good about getting us to be in strife with each other rather than be face to face. The battle for heaven wants us to criticize, to gossip, and to complain. Folks, did you hear me already? Examine your behavior. It should be a warning to you about where your focus is. We look at stuff. This is number, should be number five, I think. So I think I missed a number. We're in a battle to look at stuff, at this life, at circumstances, instead of Christ.
When we face life struggles, we're forced into a position of deciding what we believe. And based on what we believe, we make choices. Henry Blackaby said it this way, be prepared for God to allow things in your life that give the opportunity to demonstrate your faith in him. Philippians says it this way, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Another story is told of uh, when they were traveling across the, the, the Western Plains and, and heading across America on horseback. Um, there was a party of explorers that came into the Susquehanna River. That's back in Pennsylvania, isn't it? Okay. So they're, they're going into the Susquehanna River, and it's spring of the year, and the waters were turbulent and deep. So as they're looking over the situation, they decide the only way to get through this is they got to go across. So the horses start leading the way, and they start going down into the water. One of the riders is going into the water, and he's watching the water, and the water around him spinning and stuff like this. And as he's watching the water, guess what happens? He starts to get dizzy. And a rider next to him sees what's happening. And, oh, great. He's getting dizzy because you know, he's staring down there at the water. He says, look up, man, look up. And as he gets his eyes back on heaven, the dizziness goes away and he's able to get across the water. It's easy for me when my back's hurting to get thinking about the back. But if I let my focus get on the back and the pain, I'm gonna get dizzy and distracted from living for Jesus. It's easy for us to look at the things, the circumstances, the stuff we're going through, and to give it way much more power, way more power than it ever should have. We allow that to get our eyes off of him. And that dizziness will take over. So what are you looking at? If you're getting focused on your circumstances and even the tough things that you're facing, you need to start looking back to heaven. We're in a battle to look at stuff. And then the last one is we're, we need to set our hearts and minds on Jesus in heaven. And guess what? Where else is Jesus? He's not only seated at the right hand of the throne of God, but his Holy Spirit is where? Dwelling in us. In us. Here's what Paul's prayed for the Colossian church. And we probably need to be praying this for one another. It's in chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Paul says, We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. Are we praying that for one another? It happens some in the life groups as we try to take care of each other and, and bear each other's, other's burdens. It happens occasionally here on Sunday morning as somebody shares some need with somebody else and we pray together. But God wants us to do it more to be helping take care of each other by lifting each other up into that presence of God. Barclay in his commentary says, this will obviously give us a new set of values. Things which the world thought important, he will no lo we will no longer worry about. Ambitions which dominated the world will be powerless to touch us. We will go on using the things of the world, but we will use them in a new way. We will, for instance, set giving above getting, serving above ruling, Forgiving above avenging. The Christian standard of values will be God's, not men's. Here's the way Spurgeon talked about this season. To seek those things which are above. He says, okay, oh, seek to know on earth the peace of heaven, the rest of heaven, the victory of heaven, the service of heaven, the communion of heaven, the holiness of heaven. the heaven which Christ is preparing for you. You are soon to dwell above. Robe yourselves for the great festival. Your treasure is above. Let your hearts be with it. All that you possess in eternity is above where Christ is. 
Rise then and enjoy it. Let hope anticipate the joys which are reserved, and so let us begin our heaven here below. If ye then be risen with Christ, live according to your risen nature, for your life is hid with Christ in God. What did we sing already? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let me repeat the text I read to you earlier. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. So as the Holy Spirit says today, you hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. What's the message that God's been trying to give us today? The battle for heaven wants to get our eyes off of Jesus. How are you doing in the battle? Are your eyes on yourself? Are your eyes on others? Are your eyes on your circumstances? Because the battle wants to take your eyes off of Jesus. When you are tempted with sin, that's when you need to look at Jesus. As we prayed about this morning, and the reason why we've kind of organized the worship differently is we thought that we would need a time today for solemn silence. Some of you will want it to hurry fast and get done. For some of you, silence is gonna get uncomfortable. We need to solemnly bow at the throne of God. And as we bow there, to allow him to examine us. Allow him to show us what's keeping us from looking at that throne room, from seeing Jesus in heaven. It may be that as you're doing this time of silence that God says, you know what, you gotta do something about what what I'm showing you. But I'm gonna ask you, and it's gonna be really important Kids, this is going to be important for you too, okay? Those that are just coming in, Coley, Isabella, Bella, we're going to take a time of quiet silence right now. So why don't you stay by mommy, okay? Because we're going to need Tony and Karen in a moment. For each of us, this is, I need to please, this is not time to go to the bathroom, hold it. This is not time to get up and get a cup of coffee. It's not time to go get ready for anything else. This is a time for you to solemnly go into the throne room and talk with God. He's been saying some stuff to us this morning. He's been talking about whether he really is the focus of our lives. And we've all heard some things and we've said, oh, I felt a little uncomfortable there. And God's saying, don't be uncomfortable, let's let's deal with it. I want you to take time now. Be silent. God is in his holy temple. Let us keep silent before him. But don't miss this. You are the temple of God.
here's the beauty of it all, is that Jesus Christ lives in you. And isn't it cool? You don't have to wait till Sunday morning to enjoy him. But that Jesus Christ is going back out of those doors with you when you leave here into that community. Let them see him. Let them see him in you. So keep your eyes looking into heaven. Yep. <laughs> All right? And as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, folks, you can start beating the sin and the temptation and the battle and the stuff that wants to get in the way. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen.